Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming back. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and uh, keep coming back every week. I got more videos coming and plenty more planned. And today I'm talking about Aurora HDR 2018 by my friends at MacFun slash Skyloom. I know a lot of my videos I do around Illuminar and that's because there's so many filters, so many things I can do. Um, but I don't want to ignore Aurora because I use it all the time. I build tons of HDR photos and that's what I'm going to do today. So let's hop into it. Okay, I have this photo. It's a three exposure bracket and it was shot in Paddington Station in London. Here's the um, middle exposure from the bracket set, unedited, just a straight um, middle exposure. And then this is the blended HDR. So let me open up these three panels. You can see my three exposures were a negative five, a negative three, and a negative one. So basically I shot this pretty far to the, well, as far as I can go to the left, um, because I wanted it to be darker, because frankly, the uh, train station was really bright. It was uh, the day I arrived, it was like 10 or 11 in the morning. Uh, well, more like 11 or 12. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was really bright. You got all these, you know, uh, skylights and the ceiling, tons of light coming in. It was bright and I like them to be darker. So I shot it that way. So there again is the before and that's the blended base HDR. I'm on the base layer. I'm not going to use layers and uh, you've already seen this information and my histogram is kind of far to the left and that's because the photo is kind of dark because of what I already spoke about. So I'm going to close that and we're going to focus on these filters. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to go a little bit to the left actually just to darken it a tiny bit more. I'm going to bump up the contrast because it's kind of lacking in that and then HDR enhance I'm going to bump that up as well something about like that and I got to check my notes oh yeah and I used a little bit of smart tone here so something about like that but let me show you the before and after there's the before of that filter and there's the after we're already getting a little bit of a better HDR look and admittedly I'm going for kind of a hardcore not completely well <laughs> depends on who you ask um, in my opinion, not a completely over-the-top HDR, but it's a train station. They're definitely not ever clean. They're a little bit grungy. It's got that urban feel. It's got great lines. I just want to kind of grit or grunge it up a little bit, so I'm going to do some of that. Um, first, I'm going to bring up the vibrance, and that's just a quick little thing I like to do just to pop the color a little bit. Um, I don't use saturation a whole lot, despite maybe the big colors you've seen in my photos, and that's simply because... Um, the vibrance, I, I like to use that slider. It'll kind of bump up a little bit of the intensity of the non-dominant colors. And so that's what I'm doing there. And HDR structure, that's my next filter. And this is where I'm kind of going pretty far to the right. I'm going to like 70 or something. And if you look at it, you might be, especially the tiles here, you're kind of saying, wow, that's dang, Jim, that's kind of grungy. Um, and it is, I mean, there's the before. And frankly, all the detail is lost in that single exposure. But now I'm bringing it back but it's probably a little too much. Um, so what you can do is HDR denoise, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I generally reserve the denoise tool or filter for skies and water. I don't have either in here because it's an interior architectural shot and it is an urban thing, you know, being a train station and all that. I'm cool with a bit of grit, uh, but I'm gonna take it down a tiny bit by using image radiance. So uh, I go to about 50 here. And that kind of adds a little bit of shadow and softens up the detail just a little bit. So let me show you the before and the after. It's making it, to me, to my eye, a little bit more pleasing. Just that structure alone was a little too intense. So I'm using image radiance to both add shadow. It actually increases contrast, but then it also softens up some of those little bit over the top details. Now, I'm not going to worry about the polarizing filter or boosting details, glow, top and bottom, or tone curve. I don't really need any of that on this photo, but I do need HSL, and specifically, I need the hue sliders. And here's the deal, like, I'm looking at it, and I see the yellow, and I just think, that's a little too yellow for my taste. Truthfully, I like orange, the color orange I like a lot. Um, and I want this to be a bit more orange, so I gotta look at my notes here. I'm taking the orange hue a little bit to the left, which makes it a little bit more orange. And the yellow, I'm going really far to the left, it's gonna make it substantially more orange as you can see now if I went the other way it kind of makes it an ugly neon chartreuse which I, I don't like that color at all so I'm kind of going hardcore to the left here to really bump up that orange and I think those colors look a lot better let me show you the before 
to me, kind of too canary yellow. And after orange, kind of, you know, I don't know, it just looks good. Also, the thing I noticed is the lights and the little sign there are now matching the color that's kind of coming up here. So that helps, um, helps me visually. It just makes it look better in my opinion. Now, one other thing I want to do with hue, and that is this pink line just does not fit at all. Um, pink is great if you got a sunset or something, but in a train station, we ain't going to have none of that. So I go to the magenta slider and hue. Uh, nope, I don't. Actually, I go to the saturation tab and then go to magenta and go all the way negative, And I just got rid of that completely. So I just went to t take the saturation of that magenta pink color to zero. And now it looks like a gray line. Looks way better in my opinion. So I think we've come a long way just in the uh, HSL slider uh, or filter. There it was before, and now I look at it, oh my like, God, it's kind of greenish yellow. And now it's more of that orange, which I think goes well with the black. And there's a lot of kind of dark shadowy black areas. So I think it's looking good, but I'm not done. I want to soften that up a little bit. I want to do a couple of things. I'm going to use color toning, also known as split toning. Um, in Luminar and in Lightroom, it's called split toning. For some reason, it's called color toning here, but I'm gonna add a little bit to the yellow here, uh, just a smidge, right? So not very much, something, I gotta look at my notes. Uh, so something about like that, um, and that's for the highlights. And this isn't a tutorial on split toning or color toning, but I did a video uh, a week or so back that you may wanna check out, and it's something about split toning, if you wanna check that out. It's in Luminar, same idea though, it works the same way. Um, anyway, you can see the color that I added, which was with the hue slider, and then the saturation is kind of like the amount, and that went into the highlights. So let me show you the before and the after, right? A little bit warmer glow up here and that sort of thing. But now I'm going to do the opposite with the shadows. I'm going to go more to the blue realm, and I'm going to go something about like this. And so I'm kind of softening up that kind of hardcore orange by adding some blue into the shadow. I think it works well with the shadows over here. I think it works exceptionally well here. And I think it also works well with the tile where it's bringing up, like in the original photo, you probably didn't notice that the tiles were different colors. Now you're really kind of noticing that. And let me show you the before and after just for the color toning filter. There it was, a lot more just orange and now kind of a harder gray, thanks to that uh, shadows adjustment I did in the color toning and orange, which I think they go together really well. I like the look of the photo, and I like where we are so far. Um, really, the last thing I would do would just be to add a vignette. And so I'm gonna stick a little vignette on here. I'm gonna shrink it down. I don't wanna overdo it, uh, because for me, one of the cool things, and one of the primary things, and I'm gonna increase that a little bit, about this photo is where it says, mine the gap. Because my eye is drawn to where it says, mine the gap, and then my eye sort of follows this line where it says mind the gap and you can see it says mind the gap again all the way to the train. And it just creates these great lines which is why I love to shoot in train stations. So I wanna add a vignette but I don't wanna cover that up. I don't wanna overdo it. So I just, you know, I don't think I lost that at all. And in fact, I'd probably come in with inner brightness and create a little bit more punch, something like that. It creates a little bit more drama. I think you've got great visibility through the frame and with the mind the gap all the way to the train and, and face it, you know, that's kind of the point of the photo. So let me show you the before. There it is, single, uh, that's the single middle exposure from the bracket set and after, much more dramatic. One more time, before and after, and here's a uh, slider if you wanna see that, before and after. I mean, I think we came a, a long way with the colors and the details and all that stuff in really just a few minutes. And so that's how I do it, my friends. That's a full workflow for this uh, use of Aurora HDR on this train station shot. A lot of things you can do in Aurora. If you don't have it, check it out. There's a link down below. Let me know if you have any questions. If you haven't yet, subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think, share it with your friends, and keep coming back. I got plenty more planned. That's it, my friends. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. See you next time, and adios.